Dr. Alex Bomer, COVID-19 Vaccine Q&A. Hi, my name is Dr. Alex Bomer and I'm a research fellow in medical anthropology and public health at the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine. How do we know that COVID-19 vaccines are safe? So COVID-19 vaccines have to go through the same regulatory processes as any vaccine that's currently available to us. Now, for it to be approved, they have to go through three phases of clinical trials, and that means that they are tested on thousands and thousands of people to establish their safety and also their efficacy. So essentially the effectiveness of the vaccine is tested across thousands and thousands of people across the world, including myself. How were COVID-19 vaccines developed so quickly? I think there needs to be a clear distinction between being rushed and being accelerated because for the first time ever we've had unprecedented funding for research into vaccine development which means that we can do things much quicker. People also need to realise that the platforms for these vaccines have been in development for years and years. It's just now that we can apply them to COVID-19 to help us tackle this pandemic. COVID-19 vaccine side effects. So it's totally okay to be concerned about side effects and the most commonly reported with COVID-19 vaccines are a little soreness in the arm, fever, fatigue, sometimes headaches. Now these can be treated with simple over-the-counter medications such as your paracetamols, your ibuprofens, and they're fairly short-lived. So if you do develop a side effect, it's really important that you report this to the MHRA using the yellow card scheme. Why should younger people get the COVID-19 vaccine? So there are many reasons young people should get the vaccine, but arguably the most important is for our collective responsibility. Now that's responsibility to protect those most vulnerable within society, whether that be your grandparent or vulnerable family member or friend. Another thing to consider is it's also going to protect you from suffering from a potential severe reaction to COVID-19. Another consideration to make is it could protect you from long COVID. COVID-19 vaccines and blood clots. So the risk of blood clots is extremely rare and actually you're 10 times more likely to suffer from blood clot by getting COVID-19 than you are receiving one of these vaccines. Now I think again it's really important for you to understand that the reason we are aware of this or have become aware of this is because we want to be transparent with the safety data that is made available to us and also to the public. So it's really important that if you've had your first dose of the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine and you've not reacted or suffered a reaction to it, that you attend your follow-up appointment to receive your second dose of the vaccine. COVID-19 vaccines and new variants. So new variants of COVID are an ever-growing concern, but each of the vaccine candidates that are currently available to us have shown that they are still offering protection against all the variants that are emerging. Now, with a little bit more time, and when we begin to understand these variants a little bit more, what will likely happen is vaccine producers will begin to develop newer styles of vaccines which will offer a greater level of protection. Why is the second dose of the COVID-19 vaccine important? So it's really important to receive the second dose of the vaccine because it's gonna boost the effectiveness of that first dose and the longevity of that vaccine. What should you do if you're worried about the COVID-19 vaccine? It's also important that we acknowledge that it's okay not to feel okay. It's okay to be hesitant, to be worried, to be anxious about COVID-19 vaccines and in fact COVID-19. You're not wrong. You have a rationale behind these concerns, these worries. But the most important thing is that you engage with people that can offer support and offer information on each of these vaccine candidates. Now these resources can be accessed by the NHS website, the WHO website, or by talking to your local healthcare professional. 